Now, the rest of the story. Well, this is how I'm going to finish out my Saturday night. Uh, we've been doing a lot of a little bit of everything. You guys have heard me say that in the past, but it's true. And kind of comes across as I'm struggling for stuff to film because some of the stuff that's going on, I don't exactly want it out online so it's not like it's it's actually good stuff it's it's really good stuff it's just that i don't don't want to broadcast it to the world so that plate that we were making for the back of the ag leader monitor uh dad and i we were able to finish putting it together uh it's a little rough around the edges but we went through and threw a little bit of paint, a paint on it and it'll work great Dad already went through and put the other other mount on it because I got to get the monitor back in the 4640. That's where this is headed because I still need the switch box um, to run my sprayer. I'm going to go and get some winterizer, the RV winterizer, and hook the 46 back up to the sprayer so I can run all the sections, flush it with water, flush it with the, the radiator or the, the winterizer. And then I'm going to take that back down to my place and unhook it so I can put it into the shed later on this season. I'm done spraying for the year. That's a very big difference from what we had this year to last year. Because last year, I sprayed each of my hay cuttings, um, second and, you know, between first and second and second and third cutting. I sprayed three separate times. And I don't really recommend that to anybody. At least not for how I was set up. Could be done a lot worse, but 300 gallons at a time when you're putting down 15 gallons to the acre makes for a long day, especially on a manual folding boom. But then looking back, that 1,000 gallon pull type with the 60 foot booms on it, that was all hydraulically folding and everything. Uh, that actually probably would have been a little bit of a waste this year if I only actually sprayed for just the two times, right? Uh, my... Uh, Oh, mom's out mowing. Uh, my second cut. Dolly! My second cut performed like it did. And with the price of inputs, like nitrogen and everything, I couldn't bring myself to go ahead and put any more inputs down for my third cutting growth. And believe it or not, that decision seems to be working out in my favor because we've gotten enough rain to this point that... The regrowth down there, it looks like it's at least going to amount to something. We're going to be making it regardless. It'll just be the last stuff that, we, that we'll make. But um, just being able to save the money on the inputs and still actually pull off a decent crop, hopefully, is, is a big plus. Um, I'd, for how little second crop yielded down there, for the amount of inputs I put in, after first cut, I'm firmly in the belief that a lot of that nitrogen wasn't completely utilized. So letting this rain do its thing and get those roots working and all on those, those that grass, I'm gonna let the, let the plants find what nutrients they can find and then just go that route. So Andrew um, brought. <clears throat> One of the last things we need to do to the combine, because the combine as it currently stands is pretty well done on the main machine itself. Everything from greasing to checking the tires, uh, bearings and uh, grease irks and stuff that were had to be replaced. Uh, it's it's been gone through. It's it's ready to go. I actually went through and used some super glue. I'll show you really quick here. I'm gonna take this. Uh, as a matter of fact, I can't take that because I gotta put that into the outside. Um, these handles the, on on these machines, they do tend to wear out over time. And on these control handles, this is actually rubber around here. So this, 
this is actually if you could peel it back and I've been in these machines where this thing is just completely gone and the only cure for that unless anybody on line here knows where you can buy either a replacement or whatever else but I was told that if this is worn out this whole piece and you want to replace it you have to buy the whole the whole assembly and he didn't bother looking it up for me because I didn't want to know what it would cost but what we're dealing with on this particular 9770 is I was aware of that fact that this likes to wear out well see this crack right there where it's split that was actually all bubbled up and it was actually starting to peel either way of that that break so what I did is I had some industrial strength uh, gorilla glue gel yeah it's essentially you know super glue on steroids and what I did is I peeled all this back and made one minor mistake where I had this handle is adjustable like that well I actually had a little bit of glue on this that's actually what that is um, but at least it's free now as you can see but then what I did is I pulled these rubber pieces back and then I filled it full of that that glue and then laid everything down over top of it squeezed out all the excess wiped it off the best I could I mean there's a little bit of residue but a couple days of running this that'll wear it down and sorry if I'm getting oh. you look here my camera can do this without getting um, I had a bunch of glue right here that it pushed out of this hole right here but I actually ended up filling in around there also and then it doesn't you can't even notice it when you're holding it but if anything if that is saving us a little bit more wear and tear and some more time on on this handle wearing out I mean all the better so I got lucky there but what I'm going to have to do on this combine it's so much easier than it was in the 9510 but down below you can see where all the cables and wires that are coming into the cab um, there's that open slot in the back of the cab well back on the side of the combine there's a plate you take out it's six or eight screws uh, 10 mils and that way you're able to reach in and put through any of the cables that you need and that wiring harness is actually meant to come up to the mount so this is where that bracket is actually going to go to it's just a bolt and then a set screw that will hold it tight it allows you to flex it up or down uh, but this is a great because it's going to allow us to use the ag leader monitor with the existing bracket that's in here i mean because it is bolted up up in here somewhere i i didn't even want to begin to try to disassemble this thing but um it's great it allows us to use this i already had the monitor in where it fit in here perfect and then all that's left is getting that wiring harness you saw where i'm going to run it down from the back over across and i'm going to get we got a couple of the uh they're uh the short-term adhesive stuff where i can stick to this plastic and then either cable tie it back or whatever to hold that cable out of the way so we are we're not blocking our view of you know any of our information tabs here run it down and then i'm going to run it along the bottom of this added on bracket in here so it'll be down underneath i can cable tie it up out of the way and then down along the side of the cab i already got um a bluetooth speaker and a cell phone mount to to put on this i can put the bluetooth speaker up underneath so it's up out of the way and the same thing with the cell phone mount it'll be back out of the way and the only other thing i'd have to do there is potentially make another usb plug like i did for the the 82 unless i just take that one and use that one so that way there's power for the speaker and and the cell phone um, doesn't really seem like much but you rely on them so much throughout the day that you know being able to recharge your phone or just leave it hooked up and and run is 
is a great convenience anymore because we don't run radios. We don't run a CB. There was a CB in here at one point, but I was wondering about going and buying a bunch of those, uh, the Motorola handhelds or even going and getting a bunch of like the, like the high powered, um, Midland handhelds or something, something that isn't fixed to a machine that we can just carry with us because say dad or Ryan are in the semi and the combine, but like when I'm in the 76 running around with, um, the 76 in the wagon, um, you're not always in the tractor to hear them them yelling for you or talking to you. So I actually prefer the handheld radios. They're more versatile for a lot more of the random jobs we do around here. Uh, we used to have the big, you know, bricks growing up that I actually really liked. But, I mean, like Progress was thinking we could use our cell phones, but we also have a bunch of ground. Well, Valley included where the cell phones aren't reliable so um let me go ahead and i'll get that harness in and you guys can see what i did there but the combine is pretty well ready to be pulled outside and we need to do some work on the corn and the bean head uh, the bean head new cutter bar and and fingers uh, the corn head we're actually putting 360 degree chain rolls on the corn head so we're going right back to the same old rolls we had on the six row uh, for the amount of material that we have out in the field, corn-wise plants, uh, the 360-degree chain rolls are have been tested to where they allow the plants to break down in approximately two years, you know, from being completely broke down, uh, versus your standard rolls that could take upwards of four years. And the faster that residue gets broken down, it releases any of the nutrients that still got, you know, locked into that plant. And the chain rolls also process all the stalks that go down through them where they're cutting all the stalks at at seven inch lengths. So that way the planter coming in next spring, they're the perfect length at seven inches where the row cleaners can, can push them off to the side. There's a lot of the ins and outs and do's and don'ts when it comes to farming and you got to be a professional at everything, it seems. And it seems like that if you even misstep once, you're looking at losing or making big money. So uh, let me get on with this because this is the last uh, little project I wanted to do tonight and head home. All right, this is kind of rude and crude. I'm actually, if I get this thing off, I'm going to try to find an LED light to put in there because I found one for the 46 and the 76. And they work awesome and you get the away from the you know the puke yellow yellow light so this is the final product uh, this is the plug that's going to go in the back of the monitor which i think it's like right in there or might be on this other side here but i got it hung here just so it's out of the way uh just gives you an idea about how i'm planning on cable managing this because i'll get it secured back along the window and then it actually goes in the end of this bar and then it meets up with the wiring harness for the cameras and I just I got this excess wire here that I just haven't uncoiled but I'll take all that and I'll shove it up like that cable tie it up real tight to this bar and then um, I'll know where once I get them um, I'll have to put the the speaker and the camera mount because uh, the Bluetooth speaker, why do I not use this? Uh, regular radio is just doesn't work for me anymore. And generally what I do is I like to just listen to the music I have on my phone. I tried using the auxiliary input on the radio last fall and it picks up an insane amount of static. So going to Bluetooth and just putting a speaker off to the side is going to do just fine. So I know Dad, oh, Dad actually, he can use the, I think he uses the speaker in the deer steer. That's actually Bluetooth enabled. So at least, you know, Dad does do stuff with that phone, with his phone too. So the big thing is cable management is going to be important to me because once I do this, it should be one and done. Not going to be taking all this stuff out again. Um, I did have just enough cable to do this, 
uh, as in just just enough um, to run it the way I want but then either I'm going to coil it all up or I'll you know, manage it cable management manage it the best you guys can't see my arm here in the way but um, put it all back down the corner where it is I'm oh, sorry I had a phone call I had to take but in closing I think we're all really looking forward to running the combine other like the little odd things we got to do but these are replacements for the grain tank extension uh, they are cracked out on the one side but with our whole monitor set up, about to be ready to rock and roll. The dealership came, oh, excuse me, and they got our self-leveling sieve working uh, because the cleaning area, um, all of the four different sections will actually follow the contour of the ground there's a sensor underneath the belly of the machine that if the combine gets in any hills which we have an abundance of in southwest wisconsin um, it'll actually keep the cleaning area level which i think is so cool because not trying to get my hopes up that actually needs to stay on not trying to get my hopes up too high but i really do have high expectations of this combine compared to the 9510 just in how it cleans the grain, separates it, processes the material going through it. Uh, it's not a walker machine. It's, it's does To me, it does a much more efficient job of threshing the crop going through it versus a walker machine where everyone says walkers really shine in wheat and small grains where if you're planning on baling the material that's coming out the back, the walkers leave the material in much better condition. Uh, the chances of us ever doing oats or wheat even is pretty well slim to none. So being able to go through and drop in on corn and beans with a vengeance <laughs> uh, is really important to us. Uh, with the back end of the combine is actually tilted ahead. Um, the rear axle is raised up as much as it can so it actually it's tilting the back end up. So that way the grain in the back end isn't as willing to just fall out the back and it gives it... A little bit more of a chance to be collected and separated out from the rest of the residue and anybody that is in our situation that's out there that's currently watching this channel by all means what is your guys's opinion on going from a conventional harvester to a rotary machine it doesn't have to be deer it doesn't have to, any I don't care what model um, what brand it doesn't matter to me what is your opinion um, did you gain bushels to the acre just by switching to uh, to a rotary I mean I'm looking for 5 to 10 bushel to the acre in corn uh, soybeans I don't know but with the, bean, uh, the corn head that we have I'm switching to the chain rolls are going to do a better job of pulling the plant down through the head so it it's they're more aggressive there plus having the, the hydraulically adjustable deck plates is going to be huge I, I'm feeling really good about going into this fall. So I'm just really trying to keep from setting myself up for disappointment. So with that, thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying your week, your summer, your August. They're starting to do, well, once the local fair gets through, then it's all focus is on fall and everybody going back to school and that's a big reason why I'm glad I don't listen to the conventional radio or watch much TV because I remember growing up and then the whole month of August is back to school and then after back to school it's Christmas they start promoting that and I hate it so not having much of that social media presence is, is, is great so with that guys thanks for tuning in I'll talk to you later this is going to be an add-on video, or an add-on clip to another video. And I just wanted to give you guys an update on what it looks like up at the farm. So this gate's open. I'm over here because i got to clean it up, or shut it. I want to clean this lot up here. And the grass is greening up out in the pasture. I want to go around the outside. Have you look at me. i got to go around the outside. i got a couple trees that are starting in. I'm not, that's not happening at the home farm. 
I got a bunch of fence lines I want to go around and clean up and essentially what I want to show you is this is what my cow herd looks like now. now this is my cow herd. The bulls are gone. Uh, the red belted cow that was my parents is gone. And a bunch of the calves are gone. So for the umpteenth time and quite honestly this is the last time I'm going to say this. I did an exchange barter kind of get my way kind of a deal where mom and dad's cow herd is mixed of black and red cows and we got a couple black white faces not many and of course the belted the belted cows and I want the reds so that's the one time I'm gonna say it for the video so I'm not gonna keep saying it we hauled out everybody else um, the cows that I had to swap out in exchange for the red cows of my parents are gone. The calves that were on them are mine. So the cows, as of this point, the second their hooves touched the pasture down there, they became my parents' cows, as are these guys are my cows. By these guys, any of the, the cows with the green tags, that's what my parents use for tags, they're mine now. So this, this right here is what consists of my cow herd. I sent down a bunch of calves that are mine with the cows that are now my parents because the cows maybe now belong to my parents. They're in with the bull, so they may calf a little bit sooner but um the ones i sent down earlier this summer will be in with the bull with the rest of the herd so it shouldn't really mess up their calving dates too much but then all the calves that are down there blue tagged white tagged whatever that are mine they will they are going to continue to be mine just as same as the orange and green tagged calves up here remain my parents uh, that was about the best way to keep it keep it honest keep it fair between everybody involved because last year's calves or this year's calf crop still belongs to well whoever owned the cows at the beginning of the year so my plans are i got a couple odd bull calves that i'll be dealing with and they're going to get sold the way we're going through the burger in the freezer right now, I don't think we're going to need to butcher anything probably until late next year from what it's looking like. So then the plan is, and this, this really is the plan, uh, these guys have only been in with the bull for two two months. It's been the uh, first part of June until August 19th. The bulls are gone. They aren't going to be in with the bulls until I put the bulls in again with them next year. So I overwinter the bulls. That worked pretty good last year. I'll put them in this front lot. I'm going to be keeping a bull calf back for breeding for next year because the way the genetics and everything are working out, I don't have to worry about him, um, you know, going full Alabama. So at least I'm not worried about that. So I'm going to at least be able to get away with that. We're going to have to start pushing more bulls around here to make sure that everything is being bred in a timely manner because one bull taking a full two months to breed them uh, breed a herd of cows is is taking too long and there's my only red calf i had this year it's a little disappointing so this is it the charlet is staying i should address the fact that i still have two black cows in here they're not going away uh the reason i'm keeping them like i've said before she's my spoiled one really nice pretty frame and the other one that's being shy that's hiding behind that cow right there she is her calf and she is a beautiful cow so the framing that she had um, they're still gonna be put in with the red angus bulls and yeah i'm gonna have a couple mis mixed mash calves so i won't have a real true red herd but i'm close enough so Get a red bull in with them this year. Hopefully we're going to have a, a bunch of red calves next year. And then 
gonna be really rolling heavy on keeping all the red heifers and just really really taking a lot more attention and getting a lot more aggressive on growing this group of cows that you see in front of you so that's the update on the herd probably done for a while to be honest because now it's just feeding them and keeping feed in front of them and waiting until we get a chance to on the calendar to get everything rotating good plus the perk i know the bull has only been in with these cows for so long so now i've always said i wanted to go through and preg check them but it didn't make any sense because the bull you know was in with them for so long i didn't it just it wouldn't have really been worth it but now i can wait november december january whenever i decide to do it drop in see if anybody is bred and might have to make some decisions about well if you're not bred haven't been cycling or whatever else and you just need to go so the the whole cow herd thing you've heard me say it long enough where it's the area that needs to improve on uh, this is a big step in it right now the cows have been swapped around my parents no longer have any red cows in their herd other than that one red belted one and i really want to give my full attention to these guys so on to the next video.